With us now is David Hirsch. David, it's a pleasure to finally get you on the show. Thank you, sir. David, we just had a nice interview with your partner, Mark Brower, and uh, there's some areas I'd like to discuss with you for a moment here. Sure. Uh, we had discussed how in collaborative law there is an, an initiative to make divorce uh, more civilized, and I would like to ask you to share with us a little about the area of mediation. Richard, mediation is an alternative dispute resolution uh, procedure that's absolutely wonderful because it gives the individual litigants the opportunity to take back control of their lives. Once you get involved in the litigation procedure, you're turning over your future to a judge who will know you for just a few minutes of your life and will know your situation only by what's legally admissible in evidence before him. But through the process of mediating with a third party neutral who has no, uh, no involvement with either party other than to try to work towards a resolution, coming to a, a agreement through a process of caucusing and negotiating, you can, you can basically formulate how you want your litigation to end and come through a process of give and take to a, a resolution that would be far more favorable for most people than how a judge may rule. The idea is to create a win-win, not to create a lose-lose. And when you go to court, someone is going to wind up walking away as a loser. David, this is very interesting, and my view has been that nobody uh, should be enticed by the thought of a divorce. Children suffer, people suffer. It should be not uh, a matter of gain for either party. But tell us about cases that have special needs. Richard, for 30 years I have been focusing my practice in the three states in which I practice, Florida, Georgia, and Alabama, on issues involving children who are caught up in a divorce that have special needs issues, uh, as well as their parents. As litigants, uh, parents come to you uh, with a standard format of how the divorce procedure is going to work. but not all simple solutions work in complex situations and when you add into the equation of a divorce case a child with autism or Asperger's or a child with severe ADHD or ADD or learning disabilities or obsessive compulsive issues or even physical challenges such as cerebral palsy the, the standard solutions just won't work and our courts are just now beginning to recognize that they can't use the same procedures for a standard, uh, standard assignment of parental responsibility and a standard assignment of support and that they have to look deeper when you get into a situation involving what used to be a partnership in raising a challenged child and will now predominantly be a single parent making that effort uh, as the primary residential uh, party in a, in a child's life. David, this is all very interesting and of special interest is the work that you've created. You wrote a book, or patented even, a course on no-harm divorce, a very interesting concept. Tell us about it. The, the goal of the no-harm divorce course was to enable parents to end their relationships legally without destroying their children in the process. We have a lot of programs out there that bring people to the mediation table uh, to resolve their problems and, and, the, and the state even mandates a, a four-hour course that you can take over the internet. But I don't believe that that in and of itself is going to create the atmosphere that is in the best interest of the children down the road because the parents come to this point in time um, based on certain myths and misconceptions that lead them into a divorce situation and are heavily engaged in the, uh, in the need to blame each other. That's the nature of our adversarial system. And until they can learn a different approach at dealing, to deal with each other, they're going to have to influence the children in negative ways that they don't even realize they're doing. 
And so the, guy, the idea of the no harm divorce concept was to be able to provide the parents with introspective methods to look at where they're blaming, where they're refusing to hold responsibility for their own behavior, to make them see how they have contributed to the situation in which they find themselves without the necessity of looking to the other person as the source of the problem. And by doing this and then learning these methods, taking it forward into mediation, they can sit down at the mediation table, formulate a parenting plan for a post-disillusion of their marriage that we believe can work far better than a simple solution where you take the children on the weekends, you see the children on this holiday, uh, you pay this amount of money, we split this down the middle, and we're going to go out and pretend that everything is wonderful and, and that we're not going to be uh, negatively influencing our children in the future. David, this is really very, very interesting, and thank you so much for sharing this with our audience. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.